Hey everybody, my name is Marty, and welcome to another epic adventure in C++ programming. So far in our login program journey, we've constructed the basics of a login program that allows us to just check if our username and our password is correct and encrypt and decrypt as we use it. So there's a couple more functionalities that we need to add before we have a complete working model. And something that I found to be helpful is I typically write down what I'm going to do and what needs to be done in the, any particular program I'm working on. So I'm going to dust off some old relics from the past. That would be the pen and paper. Man, I haven't seen this stuff since the ancient Egyptian dates. Okay, so we're going to need a sign up function to allow you to sign up. And someone in the last video mentioned that we should... Well, I just dropped my pen. Someone in the last video mentioned that it would be a good idea to hide our password input. So that's a good thing to do too. And we need to improve our encryption and allow us to have multiple users. So in this video, we're going to improve the encryption algorithm and we're going to start implementing a signup function and a way of having multiple users. So in the last video, we created this encryption and this decryption functions here that just scrambles up our letters a little bit. And right now the algorithm is very easy and very easy to hack. So we're gonna make this here more complicated. This is really up to you. We're gonna scroll up and we shall include a new library that will allow us to use the power function so we can raise our numbers to a power and then also unraise it. Y yeah, that's probably not the right term for it but I'm not a math wizard. So we're gonna include this library called math.h and it just allows us to use functions like the trigonometric functions like sin, cos, and tan, and allows us to use power. In encrypt, we're gonna use just power. We don't really have any use for sin, cos, or tan in this video, but we might, so it's good to have it. So we're gonna go power. Now you're probably expecting the function to look something like just well, I mean, this here looks pretty normal, except for the F. We're going to raise it to the power of four. It's fine. So the F here just says, okay, don't return this as a double. Just go with a float. The difference between a float and a double is that a float has a certain amount of digits in it. So it's got, I don't know how many. It's quite a few. But you got this, about this most much precision. And then a double is double that much precision. So there's a lot more memory to work with. So it's more accurate gauge. But considering that we are only returning an integer after all, it's not really necessary to have the double. Fair enough. Okay, so now this will encrypt it, but we have to do the reverse of that in the decryption function. To do that, just go power of once again, and all we have to do is, well, we raise our letter, so the numerical value of our letter, to the power of one divided by four, or whatever number we so happen to have here. Be sure you go dot f. If you don't have the dot f, it's not going to know it's a float. So we want to tell our compiler that we'll return this number here as a float. Otherwise, it's just going to return it as an integer, which integers cannot deal with point numbers. Alrighty, so let's scroll down and we're going to have to resave our passwords here. App dot save file. We're going to be saving our passwords quite a lot here because we're going to update this encryption function. So because of that, it's guided to just have this code, these, well, two lines, it'll be just kicking around for a bit. It will be user at email.com. I'm gonna save that. Well, where else would we save it? Users.data. And then we're also gonna go app.save file and we're gonna save this in. Well, first the string of text will be grape juice, I believe is what we're going with, because it's a nice hearty drink, healthy for you, nutritious. And we're gonna save that in passwords. Passwords.data. Now, if we run this, we should it should work exactly the same way. Control save, hit F7, it should work completely fine. If we go user at email.com, and if we type our password, which was grape juice, hey, that's right, so everything works completely fine. Now, something to be mentioned, if this exponent that we raise our letter to is greater than four, the entire program is gonna break. So if we run this, let's just first see what happens. So we enter a password or username as we think we should. User at email, email.com, and we hit enter. We no longer have our level seven verification codes. I demand a refund. If we scroll up, we're gonna print out our line right here. So let's print it out after it's closed. So then we're gonna go see out line. This is also a huge part of debugging, and that's just throwing in a bunch of print statements here and there and scattered yonder, and this will tell us where things break, what's happening, and what's going on. Well, we already know that username isn't gonna work, so we're just gonna give it anything. 
and we see we, we're expecting ourselves to print out our username but instead we get weird at symbol and a dot that's no, not even an at symbol that's like a d symbol so why is it that we get this weird gibberish instead of what we would expect which would be user at email.com the answer to that lies in users.data if you open that up you'll notice well something kind of strange so this first line is supposed to be the ascii representation of the letter u raised to the power of five but we can clearly see that that is not because its first sign is it's negative so something happened there and we can actually check what the actual number would be if we went to main.cbp scroll down and we can just comment out this code so highlight it and then go control forward slash and that should do it then we're just gonna go c out and we're gonna cast the the letter u to an integer if you hear programmers talking about casting to ints and stuff and it sounds like some sort of wizardry they're just saying convert ints to floats and chars to characters and you're just converting a character to an integer we're gonna end the line um we don't really need to end the line but i guess it's more habit than anything so run that You'll notice we have 117. So that's the ASCII representation, the numerical code for it. And if we open up a calculator and we enter that value, so 117, raise it to the power of five and hit enter, we can see we got 21 billion. And we notice in users.data, we got only two billion. This number is actually a special number because if you look up the maximum possible value of an integer, lo and behold, it just so happens to be 21 billion. I guess that'd be the minimum value considering that it's a negative but whatever so data types like integers and booleans and characters and all that they have a certain limit they're not just limited list you know you can't download more ram from the internet it's just it doesn't work like that you have a defined amount of memory to play with here on your computer and certain data types are larger than others so integer just happens to be around 2 billion different numbers you can work with here so what we're essentially doing is we're exceeding the limit for this particular data type so to fix this one approach is just well we don't use numbers greater than four that kind of sucks and that program is pretty much bound to break if we give this code to anyone else so we're going to go with the better approach i mean that's the beauty of programming you can code with the grace of a skilled dancer or you can code like a monkey and turn everything into a jungle gym i tend to opt for the monkey approach mainly because i never was much into dancing so we can change this instead of encryption we don't want to just return an integer anymore we want to return something called a long integer so you don't have to write the int here anymore because it already knows it's an integer so we're just going to go with a long now if we want even more memory we can go with a long long if we want to see how big that is that will give us to the maximum number of nine i don't know is that trillion um that's not trillion i don't know but that's probably going to cover most of our cases so that's long enough for us and of course that would change this parameter to be a long 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 you'll notice that encrypt returns a long long but decrypt doesn't because encrypt is where we make it larger and then decrypt is where we make it smaller by decrypting it so if we scroll up we also have to turn this e character our encrypted character to another long long and that should solve it if we go control save hit f7 again and making sure that we scroll down and uncomment this code so highlight it and just go control forward slash again and then take out that print statement control save compile and run it it actually will work user at email.com what is this email uh, no it's email.com hey it worked and it just printed out and it's working correctly so same thing for password grape juice hey that's right so now we can take care of that other debugging print statement right here so we can just delete that right in our while loop and scroll back down after we raise this to a power let's also multiply it by a certain number how much let's say something like four so since we multiplied by four now and it was the last thing we did here it's gonna have to be the first thing we do to p underscore letter in decrypt so we're gonna have to divide by five because remember you have to do the exact opposite so by order of operations this will be solved first and then this will be solved uh not quite working because we multiplied by four and now we're trying to divide by five that's not going to work of course it isn't let's subtract two or let's subtract 14. i mean these numbers are completely up to you you can do whatever you want with them now bearing in mind that we did subtract here and it's the last thing we did by order of operations this will be solved first we need to ensure that's the first thing that happened so we're going to go pl 
plus 14 here. And we're gonna tuck this inside some quotations. These aren't quotations, some parentheses to ensure it happens first. So if we run it once more, it will still work, or it should at least, email.com. It does, excellent. All right, so you guys can make this as complicated as you want, throw in all sorts of fun functions into it. It's really up to you, I mean, have at it. With that solved, we're gonna move on to the next one. So we also notice that every time we save our file, it completely overwrites our previous users and our previous passwords. We want it to just add to it. And luckily, if we scroll up into save file, instead of going iOS out, you can just go iOS app. So the app stands for append, meaning don't erase what we had before, just append to it. So now if we run this every single time, we will receive, well, our file will grow. It grew, but there should be a zero somewhere in here to separate. And the reason we don't have a zero, is, let's just close out of that. The reason we don't have a zero is because it just overwrites onto that line. We can solve that by just adding a blank line to the very end of our password or particular username. After we give it a zero at the end, we're also going to give it a new line. Put it inside the quotes, go backslash in. It's a special case character and it just says a new line, please. Control save, hit F7, and now every single time it should add a zero to the end. Let's delete it, all this, so that we can actually see it take effect. Control save. All right, so let's try that again. Hit F7 and it should give us a new username that we've generated. We have a blank line to start off with. Oh, it's because I forgot to take it out. So take that out, control save. All right, let's try that again. So hit F7, compile and run it, and now it should, there we go. So now it's working perfectly. It's not erasing what we had before. It's just adding to it. All right, let's just erase everything. Give it nothing at all. Control save. We're going to passwords.data and we've got quite a mess here. So we're just gonna erase all of this as well. Control save, start fresh. Go into main CPP and we're gonna save a couple usernames and passwords a minute here. Just take out the login part. We don't need to do that right now. We're gonna create a few names. This one will be, well, Dave at email.com. We're gonna say his password for him to Dave. Does that sound good, Dave? He's like, yep. All right, we can't save them in the Dave file. That's no good. We gotta save them in the users.data file. And we gotta set his password here to Dave. I'm just keeping that simple so I don't forget these because I might forget them. We're gonna create a few more like Ricky, Ricky at email.com. His password will be how convenient, Ricky as well. Run that. So now we got should have a Ricky in here. Yep, R-I-C-K-Y, perfect. We're also gonna throw in a old throwback from Blue's Clues and that was Joe. I love that show, such good times. Run that, now we should just have a Joe. All right, so that's given us three usernames and three passwords to choose from. Now we need to create a check file function which parses through the entire file and checks if the particular attempted password or username is found in the file. If it's not, it's gonna return return false. If it is found, it will return true. Go into main CPP, replace these save files with app.login once again. So the first thing that's gonna change is no longer will it be just if we hit a zero, we're gonna stop parsing through that file. It's gonna be if we hit the very end of the file. Cause as you can see, we got more zeros than just one here. So we want to stop parsing once we hit this end point here, instead of just well, the first zero. So to do that, we're gonna go into main CPP and in our get file function, we're gonna add a little checker. So we're gonna go if file.peak. So we're gonna take a peak. Now file.peak, it doesn't actually assign the contents of the peaked forward to anything. It just checks, it just shows us what's there, which is why it's called peak. So if that equals EOF, and EOF is a macro that it stands for end of file and it just checks to see if file.peak is equal to the end of the file. So it's a quick little macro. So if we are at the end of the file, what shall we do? Well, we'll, we'll close the file. So file.close. The way we're gonna structure it is that the only way we actually hit the end of the file is if we have not found that particular attempted username or password. So in that case, we shall return false. Now, right now, this is a string function. Instead of returning a string, we will just return a Boolean based on whether or not a parameter, which will be a string, is equal to anything found in the particular file. So string, we're gonna call this attempt. So now I have to deal with what if we actually do find it. We're gonna deal with that when we hit a zero because every time we hit a zero, we've ended a particular word. We're gonna perform a check here and we're just gonna go if attempt 
is equal to line at this point. Then open up some squarely braces and we're going to close the file. So file.close and we are going to return true. So return true. That's not true, that's tur. True, there we go. So then we also have to deal with in the event that attempt is not equal to line, so we have not found a match, then we want to reset line because otherwise it's just going to add all of the usernames into one continuous string and we don't want to do that. So to do that, we're going to go else, so if anything else besides that, then we're going to go line.erase to completely blank it. It shall start at line.begin. So erase takes two parameters usually, where to start, where to begin. You can also use erase to erase only certain characters or certain amount of characters, but we're just going to erase everything with line.begin and line.end. Looking good, we can replace this file dot close in this return line. So not replace it, but just delete it. One more thing to take into account is that even though we've hit a zero, it's still going to be appending that zero to our line, which we don't want to happen. See, it's going to be zero. Each R is equal to zero, and then it's still going to add e our zero to line. We don't want to do this, so we're just going to tack on a little else statement here. So, so we will only add to our current line if the contents of e car are not zero. All right, take out the extra spaces and that should do it. Control save. Now we just have to change the way we access this function, which will be we just scroll up. Instead of having a username here, we can actually take that out and just check if check file, and we're gonna give it the parameter of our user, of our attempted username, which is u at username attempt, and the file, which would be user, users.data and again check file here or we, we call it get file but it really should be check file because it checks more than it gets so if check file returns a boolean and it's a true boolean we'll then carry on with the program and if it's not just say oh nice try bud same thing for our password instead of setting password which we actually don't need these strings anymore we scroll down into our private section we don't need our username or password here we can just delete those we scroll up and right, where are we? Right here, this if statement, we're gonna replace that with a check file. So we're gonna check the file, and well first we're gonna check for our password attempt. And the file we shall check or parse for that will be passwords.data. Control save and hit F7, and we got an error. Oh, have I been doing that this whole time? Yes, I have. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so right here, make sure whenever you're performing a check that says, hey, is this value equal? Use two equal signs. Otherwise, you're actually setting it to that value in a if statement or for loop, and it just doesn't work that way. So we have to scroll down again. We got to have a, that double, the double equal signs. You guys probably catch on to these errors. I don't always, so I'm a real human. I make mistakes. Missing semicolon, where could that be? Line 65. Uh, yeah, right there. Okay. Control save. That was our line dot erase. So and run it now. So now if we enter, I believe we had Ricky. I don't know if that was Rick or Ricky, but Ricky at email.com. We now have three possible passwords to enter, and that would be Joe. Now this isn't behaving quite right either. So what we just did here is we just entered Joe's password into Ricky's account and we, we got in. The reason that is, is because it just checks to see if that file contains it at all. It doesn't matter whose account we're using. So to make it a bit easier to fiddle around with this program, we're gonna throw another another bit of recursion here. So right after we go, hey, that's right, we're gonna restart the function with, well, we don't even need a cn.get anymore. We just need to go log in. So that'll restart it. And we should probably throw in a new line here, and L, and might as well just add another another new line to space it out, make it look nice. So Control Save, hit F7. Now we can fiddle around with it. So first, let's get it wrong. See what happens. Nothing happens. Let's get it right. So let's go with so what else we did. We had Dave. So Dave, we're gonna sign in for you real quick. Is that okay? Well, of course it is, because Dave doesn't have a say in this anymore. And then we're gonna use Ricky's password this time, or let's just use Dave's. Make sure that works. So Dave. Hey, that's right. So now we can use any three different accounts and use any three different passwords. As long as if we got them right, they don't have to correspond to each other. So that's that's what we're gonna fix in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know down below. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Code like, and I'll see you next video.